The first step toward change is awareness. Nathaniel Brandon, a psychotherapist and author, said once, I was born in Romania, raised partly here and partly in Jordan, while living in a Syrian family. And I have three grandmothers, one in Syria, one in Jordan, and one in Romania. And no, that is not because my father has more wives. My Romanian grandmother was actually our neighbor, an old lady I got attached to at four years old after her husband died and I decided to have her as my Romanian grandmother as we took care of each other and loved each other just like any grandmother and granddaughter. So I grew up with no certain place to call it home. I had a grandmother in each country and I've learned that you can make home out of wherever, whoever and whatever. It's only a choice and I choose to believe that all the way long. After living for a couple of years in Jordan, I completely forgot Romanian language and I also started wearing hijab. So I came back to Romania as to a completely new society, going for the first time to Romanian school at eighth grade and having to relearn the language to fit in. Now that was not as easy as I wished or expected. It took me about three years to be able to handle it and to be able to express my thoughts properly. I also had an opportunity to talk on the radio for almost a year and a half in a team with other teenagers. And I took advantage of this opportunity and started searching for trainers of self-development, speakers, authors, and started to interview them, asking questions that helped me in the first place to grow, to develop, and to fit in more. So after that, I thought I was ready to fit in. But I forgot that I was still seen as different, and I indeed am. Actually being different is not the issue, but the way that my difference is perceived, that is the issue. It's been six years since I came back to Romania. Now I speak almost perfect Romanian and I've talked on the radio, joined a public speaking club, competed and many other things, but still I'm seen as different, and a lot of the times, not in a good way. And there are two major negative perceptions that I've observed that people have about me or about other Muslims. First, a totally indoctrinated, too traditional and almost fanatic for sticking to her beliefs even in Europe. And two, an alright person who is doing great things but too sad she's limiting herself with her beliefs. So a lot of the times I'm seen as a good person but who is limiting herself by being a Muslim. In talking about limitations, this makes me think of the mass media which causes these images of uneducated people with limiting visions and beliefs. And the thing is that mass media actually influences a limitation in people in knowing what a group of people really are by presenting only specific aspects about them. And as Dalia Mugahed said once in a TED speech, who does a lot of researches about Muslim communities all around the world, that 80% of news coverage about Islam and Muslims is negative. And the majority of those people who have bad or negative thoughts and perceptions about Muslims actually never met a Muslim. And it's pretty normal that people are influenced by all the mass media because those who use mass media for other purposes than transmitting real information are really smart. They know about our thinking mechanisms and the way we function. So that makes it very easy for them to implant any belief that they want in our minds. And there are two main ways by which this happens. Two main ways by which an image or a perception can be put into our subconscious mind. First, there's the repetition. Bob Proctor, one of the best speakers and authors around the world, dedicated more than 40 years of his life studying how we work as humans and the thinking mechanisms that we have. And he and many other experts say that repetition is what creates our paradigms and the way that we perceive things. And not only that, but repetition also keeps strengthening the paradigms we have until they influence our behavior as much as possible. And the second way by which an image or an idea can be put into our subconscious mind 
is by associating emotional impact or using our intuitive fast thinking. Danny Kahneman, uh, a winner of the Nobel Prize psychologist, an author and also a TED speaker, tells us in his book Thinking Fast and Slow about those two ways of thinking. The slow thinking when we analyze rationally the information we are given and we use our logic to perceive it. And the fast thinking is, is when we form a fast impression or thought about a specific thing. And a lot of the times when the idea is associated with emotions, it also gets into our subconscious mind without being analyzed rationally or questioned. And to clarify a little bit this fast or intuitive thinking mechanism, I'm going to ask you to solve the following question without taking long, just do it as fast as you can. A bat and a ball cost $1.10. The ball cost $1 more than the bat. How much does the bat cost? Now, I'm sure that a number just came to your mind. And on the first intuitive answer, you had the number 10 cents. And as Daniel Kahneman, this fast thinking gives you an answer that is intuitive, appealing, and wrong. Because if you do the math, you will see that the right answer is actually 5 cents. And this is also from Kahneman's book. And he explains how this fast or intuitive answer seems to be so true that we usually ignore checking whether it is or not correct. And when people believe a conclusion, they are very likely to believe the arguments that appear to support it, even when the arguments are unsound. So imagine how many ideas and concepts we've believed without checking, and how many unsound arguments we've believed as well. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't know these thinking mechanisms, while mass media and few others do. And this is what mass media does. It either repeats an information, a phrase or an image in a certain way intentionally, or it associates emotional impact to convey its message to our subconscious. Think of it this way. When you know completely how a machine or an object works, you know how to control it and play it. In other words, when you know how you work, you get to choose how you live. But when others know how you work, you might live how they want. So what can we do to stop our minds from inhaling these toxic ideas and incorrect concepts? Well, we can choose to become aware by understanding the way that our mind and brain work. And to talk a little bit about the brain mechanisms on which these processes are based, I'm going to give you an example about the effect that repetition has on us. In neuroscience, there is a golden rule that says neurons that fire together, wire together. Stephen Parton, who is an author and who also studies human nature, explains the communication process between neurons, which is called neuronal firing. As a neuron fires, a chemical towards the other neuron forming a bridge. On that bridge, electric signals cross, which are believed to be carrying the relevant information that we are thinking about. And each time that electric charge is triggered, the neurons grow closer to each other, and the distance that the thought has to cross lessens each time, which makes it easier for that thought to arise in your mind faster than other thoughts. And it increases the probability of you having that similar thought over and over again, even randomly while walking on the street. So by the repetition of an information, an idea, or an image, the perception you have or the paradigm becomes more entrenched in you and closer to your reality. I decided to dedicate my time for this, to study and understand the human brain and our thinking mechanisms by online learning, communicating with neurosurgeons, going to a neuromedical center, observing counseling sessions and consultations, to understand how we work as humans on the physiological side as well as on the psychological side, the visible as much as the invisible things that are going on inside of us and around us. 
because by becoming aware, you don't only stop the incorrect concepts that are being tried to be put in your mind, but you also start to understand your worth, your, your power, and your life purpose. That is my life purpose, to learn and to share, to help people become aware of the things that are going on inside of them and around them. And as Nathaniel Brandon said once again, the first step to change is awareness. So I choose to become aware. And you, what do you choose?